Hey YouTubers, since we have so much going on right now, I wanted to get a quick video out and tell you how to make nectar. Now nectar is pretty simple stuff and you, here's what you don't want to do. You don't want to use anything that's artificial like Splenda or any of the artificial sweeteners. You do not want to use that. Keep it simple. If you're going to make your own nectar, which 90% of the time you will, um, go ahead and just use regular sugar. Any brand, just good old-fashioned cane sugar or brown sugar. I use brown sugar, I use coconut sugar, and I use regular cane sugar, but it's sugar. The second thing you're going to need is some kind of um, a flavoring. Now, you can do it without having added any kind of flavoring. And yeah, flavoring is artificial, but what it's gonna do is give them some kind of a scent. They are attracted to um, the scent of the flowers that they like, rather, that, that they want to um, get their nectar from. Smell like a combination of almonds, cherry, uh, vanilla, I have found I have the most success with these three and just a drop. Remember, you don't want to put too much in it or they won't drink it or they'll get sick. You just want to put a tiny drop, just enough so that they can smell it and then they'll find it. So I like to use a combination of any of these. I don't mix them, just one or the other. Strawberry and almond you can get really cheap anywhere okay and vanilla too don't put too much just a drop just a little hint regardless of how much you're making it you just again pretend that you're a moth you just want to be able to look up and go what do i smell um and they will um now as far as what you're using if you have a big unit like me and you have a tall unit you have to hang it like a, you want to hang it from something like this. Again, I got this at the tractor store. It is a simple, um, I think it's just a hummingbird feeder. Um, I took off the individual flower sections I found for whatever reason. None of my moths would go and put their proboscis through the little hole of the hummingbird feeder, how it came. They come with little flowers, flower buds. Um, they would not go near it for some reason. I don't know. Didn't waste my time. So it doesn't have a cover. It just has like a place for them to land. But I went one step further. Um, I have found, and you can get these anywhere, you know the stretchy stuff that you get like if your um, dog or, or one of your pets or horse um, you know, the stretchy band that you use to wrap around their feet. It's real, real gushy. Um, I rinse it off just because I don't want anything to, you know, harm them. But basically, it doesn't taste like anything, but you don't want the ones with the bitter stuff on it. They do make that for dogs and cats. But just, just pick up your standard stretchy any color, but keep them bright. Again, they're attracted to bright colors, like bright orange and bright pink um, and yellows. You want the illusion of, here's your nectar, I'm a big flower, okay? So you can use something like this. Now, get this, I was at Lowe's and I found this really small, for like, God, it was like somewhere between two and four bucks. Um, again, it was just a simple window feeder. Now this is the kind that has the suction cup cups on the back and it's supposed to be, um, you know, on your window and then you put your nectar in here. And again, I said, wait a minute, I can use that. I just have to modify it. So I took the orange spongy stuff, wrapped it really well so they have a nice grip. Because they will fall with their little feet. <laughs> they, 
they will fall and they will drown in the nectar. So you wanna make sure you're thinking like they are. And you wanna make sure that there's something they can grab onto. And this is awesome stuff, I swear. I use these things on everything. So, I bought the cheapest little window hummingbird thing. And look, I just go like this, okay? So I put the nectar in here, but now, if you're using something that doesn't have glass, like me, I have a screen, how am I gonna get them to use that? Well, get creative with it. Um, you can find a way to attach this. You know, I've done really ridiculous things, but they've always worked. Let's say you're using something like this and it's smaller, okay? You don't have the big four by two. Most people don't. I'm, a, I'm crazy, I guess I just have the bigger one, but you know, start out with something like this. Start out with your own, make your own. If you have to think outside the box, let's say you have something like this, you need to get it somehow inside so that it's attached to the, um, the wall of it and then they'll drink the nectar. Real simple stuff, right? So just play around with it, okay? If you have to make a very small incision you know, where the, where the uh, suction cups will come out this side. So let's say you make an incision here and an incision there. And look, you, on the inside, the suction cups will actually come out through those slits and they will hold the feeder up there. Now, like anything else in life, you might have to put like a paver or a brick to keep this upright. You know, just think it through. You don't want it tipping over. Once you put weight in there, you know, like your nectar hanging, once it fills up, you're gonna need some stability at the bottom. But you know what? It just goes to show you, you don't need an expensive, huge um, unit. You can, you can use just about anything. Just know that they have to have nectar, they have to be able to fly. So getting to the nectar. Basically what you're gonna use, like I said, is some kind of sugar a drop of something that will scent and they can smell it. You're gonna, I don't bother boiling it. They say you should boil it, but I don't. I just put it in the microwave until it's really super hot. And what I do is I basically pour sugar into the hot, hot water. I don't necessarily make it dechlorinated. That's a reptile thing, but I've never had any problems just taking it out of the, you know, out of the tap, heating it up in the microwave until it's really super hot. And what I do is about 40, 50% sugar. It's, you don't want it to be syrupy, but you want them to also be able to drink so they're getting hydrated. So you don't want it like syrup. Some people just put honey and stuff on a plate and they, they just kind of lay it in there whatever works for you but i know that mine do much better they mate forever lay eggs longer when they're hydrated you know when they get dehydrated they die sooner so i make sure that their nectar is just kind of play with it you know uh, you don't want it too syrupy but you don't want it to be not syrupy enough so just play around with it but that's basically it it's not rocket science but you will have to try it several times. You're probably gonna tip over the nectar too. I can't tell you how many times you're gonna make a mess. So when you're working on this stuff and you're trying different ways, so what? Just put something down underneath. But you are gonna make a mess. And guess what? They're gonna make a mess too. I mean, it's a messy project, but God, when you, when you, get, them, when you get them to lay eggs, and then we'll go over what to do with the eggs in my next video, but you can do this. I would stay away from fruit juices. I would stay away from anything other than nectar. They don't need anything else. They're only alive for a short period of time. Some of them die within days. Some of them die in a day. Most of them will last, I would say, a week to three weeks. So it's a short-term thing, but think about it. If they're mating and they're dropping eggs all that time, you're gonna get all the little tiny eggs that you want. If you don't want them, 
that's okay. You still want to make sure you take care of them. You still want to make sure that you don't torture any of them by just forgetting about them or not caring. If you are in the middle of a breeding season, you have to take care of them. It's just the right thing to do. I'm telling you, you don't want to go to bed knowing, eh, you know what, I got enough eggs out of that batch. I'm just gonna go to bed, I'm really tired. No, you go heat up some nectar and you make sure that those babies are taken care of. Those moths are thirsty, just like we get thirsty. So not trying to lecture you, but whatever your age is, it doesn't even matter. Just, you know, have a kind heart for anything that you're doing and anything you're taking care of and just make sure that every little being in your house is taken care of and isn't lying there dreaming about a drink of nectar or a drink of water or whatever. Just take care of it, you know, don't go to bed. That's, just make sure you take care of your little ones. So, in any case, that covers nectar. You can play around with it. Um, maybe yours will like a certain flavor and not the other. I don't know, some people probably don't even make put a drop of um ne a drop of flavoring in there but that's okay too again whatever works for you and if anyone's thinking can i use honey i have used honey when i've run out of sugar i have gone ahead and used honey i'll use wildflower honey orange honey any kind of honey so yeah um they tend to like that too well if you have any questions go ahead and leave them i'm gonna try and be more diligent about answering questions and again if you like what you're seeing please hit the subscribe button pass it along uh, very few people want to breed hornworms probably for a reason but i have to tell you once you get it down to a science it's so much fun you just feel like you really accomplished it um it takes several tries and i'll bet you're going to be the one that just gets it <laughs> gets it the first go round. i don't know but you know, you'd be surprised. It's such a kick. So anyway, this is Pam. I hope you have a blessed day. I'm here if you need me. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask them. And that's about it. Have a good evening. I'll talk to you soon. And remember, God is great. Bye-bye.